Amen. So again, as I prayed, the Lord has restored our calm. Praise the Lord. Amen. And um, yeah, the Lord has restored our calm. Praise the Lord. Amen. And yeah, so we're all given up on it, everybody, but Alex, not our Alex, but our Alex. What <laughs> Alex. Did you say? Oh, yeah, Alex. Yeah, Alex hadn't. So I had thought of inviting him for dinner uh, today, last week. So I thought, well, we'll go ahead with that. And. Um, and yeah, due to his great enthusiasm and his great faith and determination, we have got that car. Yeah. Yeah. So, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, this morning, um, I was thinking about tonight, and, and I just said, Lord, is there anything you want to give me to share? And, and, um, and this just came alive to me, and it's like, I'll just share it, and I pray it'll bless you. And, Test and weigh it, you know, I feel it's from the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. So it's um, in, it starts with verse 2, verse 3 in 2 Kings 13. And um, I'm going to read a few more verses than I was going to because it actually feeds into what I want to share. Um, uh, and so it's Elijah talking to the king of Israel, and um, he's on his deathbed, Elisha, and he's giving instructions. Uh, the king had come to him to know what the Lord had to say. And so he said, take the arrows, he said this to the king, and he took them, and he said unto the king of Israel, smite the ground, and he smite, smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him, and he said, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times, then hast thou smitten Syria, till thou hadst consumed it. Mm -hmm. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down, and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. So, you know, here we have an amazing thing, that Elisha, a great man of God, he took the mantle from Elijah, um, even in his death, there was such an anointing on that man's bones, that a dead body, touching it, was raised from the dead. And that's wonderful. But we're in the New Testament, and this is what I feel the Lord wants to challenge us with. We who know the power of the Holy Ghost, we who know the works that the Lord wants for his people to do, when he returns, will he find faith on the earth? That's a great challenge he's left us. And, um, and I just feel this morning the Lord wants me to share just a little bit, very, very quickly. Um, Revival began in Cana of Galilee at a wedding. And it will end with a wedding. Isn't that amazing? God's, Jesus' ministry began with a wedding and it's going to end with a wedding. How poetic is that? Mm -hmm. But you know, Jesus is, is an amazing story because um, they'd run out of wine, as you know, and, and Mary came to Jesus and she said, they'd run out of wine. And... Uh, I think Jesus said, my time has not yet come. Well, if I and she, you, my time has not yet she come. turned around and she said to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And I just believe what happened there is that Jesus had been filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit. But he hadn't even, he didn't realize that his time had come. But the last great thing his mother did for him was like a mother pushing her eagle out of the nest. She gave him the push because she knew his time was ready. Uh, and that's how I see it. You know, and I just feel the Lord wants to speak to us today about going further than we've ever done. You know, that king of Israel, he was half-hearted. He hit the ground three times. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the king, and Elisha was angry at him. He said, you, you know... You, if you'd done it six times, you would have totally defeated the enemy forever. But because you only did it three times, you'll get three, three victories. 
and I, and I just feel the Lord wants to challenge us. And I thought of this analogy, you know, babies are pushed around in prams, toddlers in push chairs, but very soon, you know, they don't want either. They want to run, they want to walk, you know, when it suits them, you know, when they get tired, they want to crawl back into the push chair, but you have to say, no, you must walk. You know, and I believe the Lord is saying that there are many in the body of Christ that are, are like in wheelchairs, spiritual wheelchairs. They're not walking, we're not walking in the power of the Lord as he wants us to. We become spiritual, as it were, almost invalids, you know? And um, I just feel the Lord is, is challenging and saying, arise, stand and walk. Move out, get out of spiritual wheelchairs. Don't just sit back. We, we were made for something more than being passive. We were made more than just being pushed around in a wheelchair spiritually. We must take, we must become mature enough to walk, run in the Lord, in the power of his might. And I, and I feel that's what the Lord is saying. I've just summarised what I've written. Um, um, yes, the price to pay for revival is heavenly disorder. You know what? You know, when the Spirit of God moves, order goes out the door often. That's not to say we become disorderly, because there's order in the Holy Spirit. But it's his order. Yeah. And this is what we want, heavenly disorder. Because God's people have got to awake, got to know who they are. They've got to go further than they've ever gone. We've got to get out of wheelchairs and we've got to stand and run in the Holy Ghost and in the power. And, you know, it's interesting that, you know, the Lord, if Elisha's bones could be so anointed, how much more... The body of Christ, you know, and I've written here just to, to finish. Stand, walk, and run. It's time to walk in anointing, run with power. The hour is late. And what was it further back? Um, basically, that's it in a nutshell. It's our job to start moving where we've not been before and further than we've ever gone before. Amen. Amen.